John Webb, Gulfport, Mississippi. I'm uh, the engineering director with the Mississippi State Port Authority here in Gulfport. And we're in the Bioview area of Gulfport. Uh, received in our house probably about seven and a half, eight feet of water. During the storm, we started off in the house with no, no dream that we'd get the water in the house that we did. Eventually, as the water rose over probably about an hour, hour and a half period, we ended up in the upstairs portion of the house with myself, my three children, my mother-in-law, and my two next door neighbors that had to come over to our house during the storm because they had nowhere to go upstairs. The light, the sheetrock gone, the light's the only thing we still have left that you can see the watermark, but that's it right there at the top of the globe. People have asked me numerous times, but really time itself was a blur. I think the water started coming in probably at about nine o'clock in the morning. And we fought it for a while, trying to keep the doors closed, trying to keep the trash and debris from coming to the house, hoping we could keep just clean water. But after probably about 30 minutes, we realized we were fighting a lost cause. And at that time, we started chasing photo albums, pictures off the walls, trying to get as much as we possibly could upstairs. And took a lot of the stuff, stereo equipment, computer equipment, put it on top of beds, again, not thinking that the water would get that high. And within probably a 45 minute period, my last run was through the medicine cabinet. I was walking through the house, neck deep water. And at that point, I figured it's time to go upstairs and, and sit tight and ride it out. Children did great until they started detecting dad get a little bit nervous. And at that point, uh, it was just sit back and wait. And uh, my wife who works for Mississippi Power Company was in Meridian on a sign, but up there storm duty had cellular contact with her, and I stayed on the phone with her just asking her, where is this dadgum storm? We'd lost TV early, we lost electricity early, had no idea if the storm was still two hours out or if we were in the height of the storm, and that was probably the most, the most nerve-wracking part, I guess, it's just not knowing. But the house, you, just, you can't imagine the roar, you can't imagine the shaking, and uh, the low frequency vibrating, and that's when we'd get nervous, and several times we resorted to the hall, to the bathroom area, and uh, just hoping for the best. And fortunately for us, other than a ruined house, things turned out okay. And a long storm. I've been through two before, and typically a hurricane seems it'll come in, be bad for an hour, and go. This lasted all day long. I mean, really from about nine o'clock in the morning to you know late afternoon. Water finally receded out of the house at about, about dark, and that's the best I can remember. Again, time is an absolute blur. Next, I'd like to introduce you to my wife, Cindy, who was not here in the house during the storm and I'd like to hear her perspective on, on the story. And this is Cindy. Hi, I'm Cindy Webb and I work with Mississippi Power Company. And so I was not here during the storm. I have a storm assignment that takes me about two and a half hours away from here. So I was not here, but um, I was able to talk to them at least until about one o'clock that day to determine, I knew water was coming in. Um, I knew that water was rising. They told me at one point it was rising about 10 minutes, um, about a foot every 10 minutes. So I knew that it was, it was coming quickly. And at one point I did lose communication with them and had no idea if it continued to rise, if they were safe because we lost all kind of communication. So I didn't know if they were, if they were safe or not. But basically this is um, where we are is the downstairs of our home and we lost everything. Um, we have sets of French doors that furniture liter literally floated out those doors and ended up we found the grandfather clock back out in the backyard. We found um, pieces of our lives. We found pieces of other people's lives in all of our debris. And we, we just, you know, you just pick through the rubble. The worst part I think for me is coming back and seeing it was full of, if it were just clean water coming in and going out, that might be a little bit of difference, but it was full of mud. And I cannot describe to you once the heat sets in what that mud smells like, because that's a mixture of the gulf, but also your sewer systems back up and they break. And so if you just, you've got raw sewage and water in your home, on your floors, on your um, furniture, and you can't, you can't clean that. Um, you know, some folks have said maybe try some bleats and things like that, but you can't get that out. You can't get the smell out. You can't make it clean. So all the kitchen cabinets had to be ripped out. Everything from um, on the first floor, everything had to be ripped out. But I can show you what um, we did find. 
We were able to save, um, tried to save some of the little trophies. My 13-year-old um, is a big, um, she was a big baseball player, and she has a lot of, a lot of trophies, and we were able to save, you know, some of those. And um, just this, this gives you an example of the photos that um, we're trying to say, save. As you can see, they're just, they're just stuck together and, and just in a big mess. And I don't really know why I keep holding on to them, but you can see this is my 16-year-old now, and that's, that's our 13-year-old. And so you can still see just a little bit of it, and you can't throw that kind of thing out because that's just... That, that's our lives, and so we end up with this basket full of our lives. And some of them you can't make out. And the hard part is, you know, if you had a, if you had a lot of time that you could have separated these things quickly, that's John as a, as a teenager. You, maybe you could have saved it. But you can't. You try, but and you do what you can. But everybody's okay, and we made it through the storm. Everybody's safe and sound. There were no injuries, so we're we're okay. After the storm, you just, you don't know what to do. You, you just look around and, and you just look at each other and you just, it's so overwhelming. But when crews of people literally come to help you, it just is such, it, it's overwhelming because they come in and they give you some direction and they tell you, they help you decide what to do and what needs to stay and what needs to go. And they just come in and they give of themselves tirelessly and, and endlessly. And everybody's hot and tired, but they just, they start hauling stuff out and they clean it out. And you begin to see that there's a little light at the end of the tunnel when you have some help. Otherwise, we would have been here for months trying to clean this thing out and not be able to save even the stru you know the structure like the studs and and stuff like that because we had to get that insulation out for the mold and mildew but when people arrived it was they were I, I know they were sent by God because you you cannot do this by yourself and people just came in and they you're they help you because you're in shock you don't know you don't know which way to go or what to do or where to even start but these folks you know from all over the country really have been here to help and, and to give of themselves and they don't want anything in return and that's that's the hard part too you want to repay them but all you can do is say thank you see what that was